cloud. Okay. Okay. Good evening. I'm Glenda Carlin. On Facebook, it's Glenda Carlin Bussick, B U S I C K. And my YouTube channel is Glenda Carlin, A Course in Miracles, YouTube. In case you don't come out live or you want to listen to this again, just go to my YouTube channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. First thing we want to do is invite in Holy Spirit, Jesus, Buddha, enlightened beings, ascended masters. Now, enlightened beings, what that means in ascended masters are people that were in the body in, well, in some form, <laughs> And they became enlightened. And then they live in this enlightened state and acts, can access the physical realm through us when we invite them in and can help all our brothers and all sentient beings wake up. But anyway, enlightened beings, ascended masters, masters were in a form and they remembered what they what they were, which is this light, pure, clear light, Christ, Buddha nature, in essence, also God nature, because there's only God. They remembered what they are, what their brothers are, and what God is. And, and then their body was an image in their mind. And when their mind became illumined and enlightened, then the body became en en illumined. Enlightenment means filled with light, the, full, the mind. The spirit's already lit up, but we've just blocked it with our thoughts and with, with thinking like Holy Spirit, practicing advanced forgiveness, practicing course and Dzogchen truths or any other truths, spiritual truths you practice, you're working with Holy Spirit, Jesus and Buddha and these enlightened beings to purify your unconscious mind. And then you become awakened, awakened and illumined and illumined is all these chakras light up, your subtle energy fields lit up, your heart opens, your mind awakens, you become, you have awakened awareness. Um, and that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight is what are the characteristics of awakened awareness and how can you go from ordinary awareness, which is the asleep state, ordinary awareness where ego you just were just aware of ego and labeling things good and bad, hating and liking, sorting, big, small, ugly, pretty, happy, sad, dualism, two-ness. Welcome, Danielle. Um, that's the ordinary mind. That's this dualistic state that we're asleep in sub of subject and object, two-ness. Now, what you awaken to is called not to, because there's union with source. There's only source, so not to. So welcome, Holy Son of God, Leon, Holy Son, Holy Son of God, Nance, Holy Son of God, Glenda, Holy Son of God, Barbie, Holy Son of God, Angela, Holy Son of God, Danelle, Holy Son of God, Lynn, Holy Son of God, Debbie, Holy Son of God, Teresa, Holy Son of God, Gabby, Holy Son of God, Ed, who's having trouble on getting in on the internet. Sorry about that, Ed. Just try, you know, and even when I, whatever time you get here is perfect. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, now, uh, uh, because this, I'm having this awakened awareness, and it's new to me. It, it's, it started, you know, when I was in Missouri, when my sister was passing. And on July 12th, the day she passed, that morning I was out walking. But per, because I was there, that was, a I think, a Wednesday. But we'd been there since a Monday. And I was downloading all this love and light for her and leaning back and letting the enlightened beings, they can work through your form. And I was leaning back, letting the enlightened beings do whatever work they wanted to do on my sister, the nurses, the whole nursing home, et cetera, hospice nurses, et cetera. And, and I was resting consciously in the light, in the light, meaning just resting, meaning just being there in our true nature, which is this clear light. And it comes in and it goes out. It's a vibrating, it really, 
it really is radiating and reabsorbing at the same time. Uh, there's really no separation in it. When I say it goes in and out, it's not separate movements. It's radiating and reabsorbing, but it feels like it's vibrating. Now, in this physical world, we feel these sensations and we're aware of these sensations. But of course, in the absolute world, there's no sensations or feelings. But this is the high. This is how you awaken and become enlightened in the physical world. Hallelujah. We can do this and do it using a course of miracles. Thank you, Helen Schutman and Bill Thepfer for a course of miracles and Gary Renard for his books and Lama Suri Das for his books and all these other books that we read and help us along the way. Other monks, Zen masters, other Dzogchen teachers, wh whoever you know, touches your heart, these truths touch your heart and you have, you have a, uh, uh, and you have a feeling, you have a connection. Like now our group, we have a connection or you all wouldn't be coming back once in a while. It resonates with you, whatever I'm saying. And then you're communicating things that people love hearing you talk and, and comment on things. Welcome, Holy Son of God, Gonzalo. Welcome, welcome. Um, so anyway, when I was in Missouri that morning, as I tried to describe, because, oh, I'd been saying I love you silently to everybody that showed up in front of my face, images in my mind, to the, all those staff in the nursing home. My two, uh, my two sisters were there and a brother-in-law and a niece and her husband um, and, and practicing Jesus' advanced forgiveness, looking past the form to the spirit that's here, that's advanced forgiveness uh, and calling on Holy Spirit, guide me what to do or say. And I'd be reading in the course and reading in this book called Buddha is as Buddha does. Buddha is as Buddha does by this Lama Surya Das. So, um, and even, and, oh, okay. So that morning when I was out walking, I looked out and there was just this, oh, there'd been a Facebook post about that we live in this big mind of God. And I'd been sitting with that post that morning before I got out of bed. And then when I was walking around and all of a sudden I just looked out and, and it was like the big mind, which is God mind, was all that I saw, this clear light. And everything was, was in that light. Some cars were moving in the light. The trees were stationary in the light. People were walking around in the light. I was walking around in the light. I was thinking in the light, in the God mind. Everything was included in God mind. Nothing was excluded. And, but I did, but I've been sitting with that since I got home and, and experiencing it at a deeper level and asking Holy Spirit, Help me understand this better so I can explain it and help my course group because this is why we're studying the course. And I'm still added the Zochian truce to the to my uh, practice. Um, and then so what happened is this book. No, really what come first is in A Course of Miracles. Here's what Jesus says. And this, let's see if I wrote here where that is. Man, that'll show up down here somewhere. I forgot to write where this was. The purpose of the atonement is to restore everything to you, or rather, to restore it to your awareness. I'm going to read that again. The purpose of the atonement, I see the atonement means the separation never occurred. And that's our sole responsibility is to accept the atonement for ourselves, where we recognize this has all been a delusion, a dream, an hallucination, um, uh, just obscurations, judgments, veiling, darkness of thoughts and emotions, negative emo egoic emotions. Veiling the clear light, this radiant light 
that's really love light. This light is soaked with love and it's unconditional love. It's God love, not human love. That's been veiled from us. So the purpose of the atonement, once you accept it, is to restore everything to you or rather to restore it to your awareness. Now, and it's saying restore everything to you and restore it to, but it says yet yeah, to restore it to your awareness. So I, what I never used to, I did not get this at all. I didn't know what awakening really meant or enlightenment. Now this is just where I'm coming from. But what this is, is you have awakened awareness because it's before it's asleep. Because think, just uh, sit with what's watching me talk, what, what's feeling you, your breathing, you're moving your arm or you're doing whatever you're doing. What's aware of that? But it's an awareness. You're having an awareness of how you feel. You're, you're walking around, except of what's going on. It's an awareness. But in an ego, it's ordinary where we're just looking at forms and believing that's our brothers is that body. We're believing, you know, uh, they can do it's good and bad and sorting and, and picking out the errors our brothers are doing. <laughs> it's what ego does. Okay. So, but then I found myself sitting within this book, Buddha is as Buddha does, is the last chapter. It's chapter 10. But before I really explain that, this whole book is based on, it's called 10 Paramitas. But what those are, are virtues. Now see, Holy Spirit and Jesus don't talk about for Holy uh, Paramitas, that's a Buddhism word, but virtues, and I didn't really search the word virtue, but what the whole course is wanting us to do is, and Dzogchen, is to go from service of self, me, 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 to service of others, thinking about others and changing how I think and my behavior from being an ego to being this holy Christ, this holy Buddha, this holy God. And so I found a paragraph. So the whole course, what here's what Jesus says. He's wanting you to start thinking like him. Here's what he says. That's chapter five, section one, paragraph three. It, meaning the miracle, asks that you may think as I thought, joining me in Christ's thinking. Then he goes on to say about what he's wanting you to do is change, is your, change your behavior to act like me. That's chapter five, section two. And he says, I have enjoined you to behave. He means he's asked you as I have behaved. But we must respond to the same mind to do this, meaning the same Christ, Buddha mind, God mind. This mind is the Holy Spirit whose will is for God always. He teaches you how to keep me, meaning Jesus, as the model for your thought and to, be, to behave like me as a result. The power of our joint motivation is beyond belief but not beyond accomplishment. What we can accomplish together has no limits because the call for God is the call, is the call to the unlimited. You are unlimited in your powers, your holy powers of thinking of your brother as spirit as clear like thinking of yourself that way. And finally awakening to that. Uh, child of God, my message is for you to hear and give away as you answer the Holy Spirit within you. So see, those two sections are saying, Jesus is telling us, I want you to think like me and I want you to behave like me. Now, how the hell are you going to do that? Well, that's the lessons in the course where we're changing how we're thinking. And then it dawned on me what that whole course is teaching is these 10 paramitas in this Buddha is as Buddha book, uh, does book. And those paramitas are, let's see if I can find them. I think I wrote them in here somewhere. Is, is the gift of generosity. Because now, so you're, you're being generous 
with maybe you help support a, a food a food bank or uh, you, you help somewhere your neighbor do something or you give money for the fire victims in in Maui or besides that you're thinking of in the spirit but is or you help a holy group somebody and then and you're generous not just with your money but your time and your thoughts your holy thoughts generosity ethical self-discipline ethical now oh and all these pyramids i highly recommend this book buddha is as buddha does it's in conjunction goes parallel with the course but it gives just regular explanations on how we can practice but it goes with ethical dis self this oh all of them deal with outer outer inner and secret obstacles because that's the three obstacles that we have that we're that we're purifying and overcoming and undoing in this retraining of the mind. Outer is how we behave. Inner is how I'm thinking. Secret, secret is this unconscious mind stuff. Or secret is things we've hidden from ourselves that have been laying there. Holy Spirit kind of brings them up and we repress them or deny them. We don't want to bring them to the light. So there's outer, inner, and secret. And, and that's all explained in this book chapter, but there's 10 chapters where it's explaining how you can practice ethical self-discipline, patient forbearance. See, that's patience. And patience really is involved in all of these. Patience, uh, I'm going to try to hurry here. Heroic effort that you really are, you persevere. You're heroic mindfulness and meditation you're mindful of what you're thinking saying doing you meditate so you're aware of how the mind's working you wisdom wisdom is a paramita skillful means means how do you handle these situations that show up because when i was studying the course before this incorporation of zochin i had no idea that what awakening men is we're living an enlightened life here in the physical realms, we're soaring and swooping at the same time. The soaring, touching our divine Christ, Buddha, God, divinity, but also the ups and downs of human life. So we're learning how to live skillfully in this life by making subtle distinctions and discernment to make choices. Uh, and we do them with this higher nature. Uh, then there's higher spiritual aspirations, higher accomplishments, and the final one's awakened awareness. Now, so I was reading the 10 parameters, but this last chapter, what it does is it's talking about awakened awareness. And I'll just, read. I'm going to read what this says. Because I would, and see what happens. Oh, I also realized that as you study the course and all these different books and teachers that you're involved with, we're doing kind of four things. We're learning things, then you reflect on them, then you have met, you meditate on them, then you integrate them. Integrate means that's where the rubber hits the road. You integrate them into your daily life. It does you no good to just learn and read this stuff. You reflect on it meditate on it and integrate it just investigate that and, and and see if that's not how the hell it is now by reflect on it doesn't mean we're doing it with ego you're asking holy spirit to help you because ego you can't make yourself understand this i'm not talking about that type of understanding where you lean back and you're you know you just ask the question holy spirit help me understand this reflect on this and while you're doing dishes or brushing your teeth, you get the meaning of something to the, the core to the core of you. Um, so this last chapter talks about awakened awareness. And so I'm going to read this paragraph that preceded these uh, five. There's five wisdoms that develop as a result of thinking and behaving like uh, Jesus and Holy Spirit, you, you develop and cultivate and these five wisdoms of the holy mind, 
But here's what it says. The Islamist Suri Das wrote, with all the other transformative practices, see, these are transformative practices that Jesus is having you doing in the course. They're transforming your mind from ego to your Christ awareness. We have discussed their manifestation on the outer, inner, and secret levels of our being. Now, yana, J-N-A-N-A, means awakened awareness. So don't let that word bother you. But awakened awareness is more of all of a piece, ineffable, all-pervasive, infinite, encompassing, and, and subsuming everything. Awake, that's aware, that's awareness, awareness, awakened awareness is not a particular entity or thing, but a luminous, peaceful, potent, coherent oneness of being. This awareness of this awakened awareness is oneness of being. Yana is traditionally broken out into five yanas known as five pristine wisdoms. And these ancient, uh, let's see, they're facets. Their facets, like a diamond has facets, facets of the all-embracing nature of awakened awareness. Okay, so here are the awakened aware, these wisdoms that come about because you get awakened awareness. Mirror-like wisdom, discriminating wisdom, equalizing wisdom, all-accomplishing wisdom, and spacious, all-encompassing wisdom. Now, this last one is what described what happened to me. <laughs> and it says here, spacious, all-encompassing wisdom includes everything and excludes nothing. It is analogous to what theologians might call divine vision. And see, in A Course of Miracles, that's what Jesus tells us about is vision, where you go from seeing with two eyes to this single eye Christ vision. It's analogous to this divine vision, but Buddhists call it Buddha vision. See, Jesus calls it Christ vision. <laughs> Isn't it great? They're both the same because we're a Buddha, we're a Christ, meaning a holy, holy being that's only been veiled by these judgment thoughts. We're perfect, perfectly pure and innocent, just like our forgiveness sentences say. We're whole, pure, and innocent. All is forgiven and released. It's only been these thoughts, these obscurations. And what he's saying here, this wisdom, this spacious, all in company. Remember, I was standing out there in that parking lot, and my mind just looked out, and there it was. One huge, big mind, that's this clear light. It's like looking out at your looking out in your room. Every your room's in this big mind, your body, your furniture, your apartment building, your house, your street. That's all. These are all projections in the one big mind, this spacious, all-encompassing mind. It says here that kind of wisdom is displayed when one realizes the true nature of mind. And see, the true nature of mind is this clear, pristine light. That's its true nature because it's pure. It's not been obscured by any, all those judgments are purified. It's pure. And when this um, is displayed, this vision is displayed, when one connects fully with the source of awakened awareness, the universal mind. So your awakened awareness, it joins with source, which is God mind. So you're not separate. First, your awareness awakens, and then it just, it's then that one big mind, you just see it. You're in union with it, in communion. It's not separate, nothing separate. Everything's in it. So I would sit with that and went, wow. That's what's happened to my mind. So then I went looking in the course. This is, um, here's what he talks about. He, that means I think Holy Spirit. Because this is. 
Oh no, that's me that wrote this. So I'm no, this is probably Jesus and Holy Spirit that says the knowledge, this knowledge, and I assure you that it is knowledge, means that Christ has come into your mind and healed it. So it's huge what you're doing when you ask Holy Spirit to help you see something differently, or you look at one of your brothers and think of them as spirit. Because every time you do that, you are healing your mind. You're not aware of that, but you're healing your mind. And every time you do a healing thought, Holy Spirit and Jesus can maybe do a hundred or a thousand healings. It's not one for one. Jesus tells us that in the course. So just picture during the day, how many times if you could see your sticky note or remind yourself to think of people at all your loved ones, the ones that are immediately around you, then usually the last ones you think of, oh, they're God, they're Christ, they're Buddha. I love you silently. You love them to their an unconditional love. Doesn't mean you can't talk to them about something that happened. Try to come to a resolution because that's one of these wisdoms. It's called, it's called, um, 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 all, where is it? It's discerning, discriminating wisdom. Dis we're not, we're not doormats. It's called discriminating wisdom where you can make with Holy Spirit and your Christ, higher Christ mind, distinctions and discernments on how to do things how to live in this world, but yet remembering your Christ. So what I did, I looked up in the course on this first wisdom called mirror-like wisdom, where in the course Jesus talks about a mirror. <laughs> it's beautiful. Here's what the Buddhism says. Mirror-like wisdom clearly reflects whatever is without distortion. Because see, It'll get to the point where you become so mindful, so aware when egos uh, judging something that you're not going to go. You're not choosing to go with ego mind. That means you're not going to go with distortion. You clearly see, like I'm clearly looking at Angela. There's Angela. I'm not sorting what her room looks like or how pretty her dishes are there in the hutch. That's ego starting to sort and label things. This mirror-like wisdom clearly reflects whatever is without distortion. The essence of mind is emptiness. Now, all emptiness means is it's absence of separate forms because that confuses people, even about clear light. Clear light means and even Einstein, last week I talked about that. Einstein talks about there's really no full matter here. It's all space and light. But with the vibration comes slower, then there's a density that looks like a body. But there really is space and light, and which is clear light and emptiness. It's absent of form, although... You know, you still know that the God source animates every form. Spirit, the spirit of God, the light of God animates every form. It's like puppets. We're just all animated. These are skin suits, flesh suits. We're animated beings. We're light beings, Jesus tells us in the course. Anyway, so anyway, I looked, it says, um, 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 the essence of mind is emptiness or formlessness represented in mirror-like wisdom as unimpeded clarity. So again, we're back to clarity, clearness, clear light. Okay, now that's what I want to read here. In this world, Jesus says, this is in chapter 14, section 9, IX, paragraph 5. In this world, you can become a spotless mirror in which the holiness of your creator shines forth from you to all around you. You can reflect heaven here. Remember, we talk about Garden Eden's, Eden's now. It's only our thoughts that have made it any different. And yet no reflections of the images of other gods must dim the mirror that would hold God's reflection in it. In it. Earth can reflect heaven or hell. Listen to that. There's Garden Eden or hell. God or the ego. You need but leave the mirror clean and clear of all the images of hidden darkness you have drawn upon it. 
God will shine upon it of himself. So as you look out and you want to practice, see you sit with these wisdoms besides the course and you're sitting with, well, that's how my mind will think when it's fully awakened. But I can sit with this now and reflect on this that and you look at a mirror in your bathroom or wherever that mirror is clear, totally clear, totally clear. And if you just look into it, you see your form there. It clearly reflects the form until I start judging whether, you know, my face needs to have this done to it or I need to brush my, have brush my teeth right. I need to, uh, this is bad or this is good. You just watch the ego mind because that's what it does. And remember, you can never, ne we never repress uh, egoic thoughts or feelings that they're never, ego's never going to stop talking. Even when you're awakened and enlightened, you just learn to flow with it and not agree with it. Just like in that chapter rules for decision, you choose to go with Holy Spirit where you look at the mirror, the clear, that mirror is clear, clear, pure purity it's clear and it's in that mirror reflects whatever you put there in front of that mirror just like i look out in my at my back patio everything here the whole god mind is clear and pure like a mirror and all the projections are perfect just like they are not wanting to change anything uh, have attachment or aversion push it away got to have it and you still can plan and do your vacations and all that, but you're not attached to the outcome or you have a version to a politician or some stuff like that. Okay. Anyway, that's, uh, that's what he's saying here in, in this world, you can become a spotless mirror, meaning your mind becomes clear and pure. Then you look out and see the God, big God, clear mind that you're, that you are in. You're in, you're in it. Everything's in it. You're with it. You're God. My, there's only God mind. Let's see what else it said here. Uh, oh, a sleeping mind must awaken, must waken as it sees its own perfection, mirroring the Lord of life. So perfectly, it fades into what is reflected there. And now it is no more a mere reflection. It becomes the thing reflected and the light. So you'll then remember and feel the, the arc of light gets released. The great rays starts to download and you feel the vibration of this light that you are. It radiates and reabsorbs out of you as you experience having awakening your awareness awakening your mind to its Christ mind, Buddha mind, opening your heart to this unconditional love. Every brother you meet becomes a witness for Christ or for the ego. Every appeal you answer in the name of Christ means every brother you see as Christ brings a remembrance of your father closer to your awareness. See, there's the word awareness. And I, in my email I sent out, I research a lot of places for aware where awareness is in the course, but I'm not going to take time to go through all of those. But it might be it, it, talking about this might help you reflect more on you're going from ordinary egoic awareness to this awakened Christ Buddha awareness. The second wisdom that happens due to this uh, mind training from the course and you practice in Jesus advanced forgiveness called disc discriminating wisdom can make fine distinctions and discernments. This comes from Buddha as Buddha does that are true and undefiled by desire or fear. Cause see, that's the problem. The ego is coming from desire and fear because Jesus teaches us in the course, the opposite of love is fear, but what's all encompassing can have no opposite. It's just in a delusion that we can think there's an opposite. We never put the body in arms way. But anyway, we're, uh, with this, this wisdom is undefiled by desire or fear. It understands karma and all interconnecting causes and origins. 
as the empty essence of mind manifests the individuality and variety of phenomena, it displays dis discriminating wisdom. Now, what happens, this pure, perfect, God clear mind, that is totally creative. That's what the Son of God used to create the Garden of Eden and make the Garden of Eden. But then when he fell in love with a form, believed he was a form, he fell asleep. And nowhere in the Bible does it say Adam and Eve fell asleep and nowhere to say he woke up. And the whole course of miracles is hey, the Son of God is asleep. He seems to have split his mind apart. Seemed because you cannot split your mind. It's only in a dream you could do these things. So therefore, that's why we awaken from the dream. But what this is saying is this God mind creates individuality. Each of you have a personality, an individual lifestyle. And even when you awaken, as you awaken, your personality is unique for this Christ mind this Christ spirit. And that's the beauty of it all. We don't all become like, like um, what's it called? Uh, put everything in a blender and make it all smushed up as one smush, you know? No, we're all unique children of God uh, radiating this love light into this world using our particular style to help our brothers wake up, whether it's silently or whatever you might say to your family or whomever you're guided to say, whatever you're guided to say. And it manifests a variety of phenomena. So look at all the trees, the ants, the bugs, everything, the types of houses. All that is, is projections that are animated by the light of God. We don't call them good or bad, although the children of God can use the mind to not do loving things. And we don't condone that, but yet we look and we can do whatever we're guided to do about that. Call 911 if we need, if there's something going on or whatever. Um, but yet think of that person as spirit, as Christ, Buddha, God. And then here is something about discriminating wisdom. This is from the course, chapter 11, section eight, paragraph 12. If you perceive offense in a brother, pluck the offense from your mind, for you are offended by Christ and are deceived in him. That's sort of like, I forget that thing somewhere in the Bible. If you, you know, I forget what it is. You, uh, you, you judge somebody, it's you, or you got the thorn in you or whatever. Here's what he says. If you perceive offense in a brother, Pluck the offense from your mind, for you are offended by Christ and are deceived in him. Now, remember what this discriminating wisdom said? You, you become aware of karma, cause and effect. And Jesus talks about that in the course. If you're aware of cause and effect, then you become aware of how the heck you're thinking. Because how I'm thinking, that causes karma. How, what I sow, I reap. And what thoughts I have come back to haunt me. They, they all get stored in this one unconscious mind. So I become aware of what I'm thinking, saying, and doing. Because you're aware of karma. And you don't want to accumulate more karma. You're undoing karma. You're purifying. You're helping Holy Spirit and Jesus purify your mind and heart. Uh, and then here is another one. Perceive in sickness, but another call for love and offer your brother what he believes he cannot offer himself. You will be made whole as you make whole because see, that's the deal. It's all. And then he goes on to say uh, is to recognize in hatred, the call for love. The whole course says is love or a call for love. So that's why we silently say, I love you even to Putin, Chinese leader, all these politicians, whatever the hell it is silently we don't condone what they're doing but we're thinking it's how you think of your brothers because that's what's going into your unconscious mind that's karma <laughs> subject and object it's not the cards you're dealt but how you play the hand because we karma it, whatever shows up in your life whatever it is we're not judging it we're letting it come and go but it's not the cards you're dealt, but how you play the hand. And as you 
think more like God, uh, Jesus, Christ, Buddha, and behave like him, you develop these, you, you develop those 10 paramitas, those 10 virtues, you develop these wisdoms, this higher way of thinking, acting, and doing. Then here's the third one, wisdom, which is these are facets of awakened awareness. When you have awakened awareness and awakened Christ's mind, you have these wisdoms, these higher wisdoms, or how you operate. Equalizing wisdom sees the oneness or equality of everything and recognizes the essence of all is emptiness. See, now emptiness means clear light, purity, not obscured by uh, separate things. Even though projections show up, they're really not there. They're space and light, but pure light permeates everything, radiating pure light and love. It's soaked with love. Oh, I want to, okay. It registers, it's called one taste. That means equanimous love, equanimity, equal love for all. We're talking the big unconditional love, not the human love. I can love somebody today and hate them tomorrow or like or dislike. We're going beyond like and dislike, beyond love and hate to unconditional love. But anyway, okay. Uh, essential oneness, interwovenness, and the homogeneity of the myriad, myriad things and the core, their coherence within the holographic mandala principle. See, this is all a hologram. It's meaning there's every part contains the whole and it's all projections of light. It's, it's got in this God mind is creative, forever creative, forever creative. That's why we don't, in meditation, we let thoughts come and go like clouds in the sky, like birds in the sky. They'll ultimately come and go because they're following the flow of this light that's coming into your, uh, this great ray into every person, all their light, the light that's in their eyes, that light flows in and out. And that in and out flow of light follows, it causes the breath is in and out. The ocean waves in and out. And if you leave things be in this flow of light and uh, light energy, light, God light, God mind, God light, it comes and goes until you have attachment and aversion. You want it. If you want it, you hang on to it. Attachment. You don't want it. You have aversion and you push it away. Either way, those cause karma. They, uh, they're thoughts and feelings that cause an action. And with an action, you, do, you have this. If you're not acting in a holy way, it then causes thoughts, emotions that you, you'll be letting go of later. That's why your conscience might bother you later and go, oh, I thought that about that person because Holy Spirit's bringing it up to you. And so you sit with it and go, oh, oh no, they're Christ, they're Buddha, they're God. I love you, I love you. You're faking it while making it because you don't really believe all these people are Christ, Buddha, God. I didn't. It, it's years of work to get to the point, but you got to practice. You got to integrate this into your daily life. But anyway, this is called equalizing wisdom. And here's what Jesus says. For no two brothers can unite except through Christ, whose vision sees them as one. So as you forgive your brother, meaning look past their body to the clear light that they are of spirit, you've joined with them. Two brothers united in Christ. For until Christ comes into his own, the son of God will see himself as fatherless. The other thing you're doing all along this is saying either also, I love you, father. I love you, creator. I love you, source of all, everything. The living Tao, it's called. This living force. This It's living. It's alive. It's static, full of love, light. It's just a static. It's joyous. It's loving. It's, that's, so, anyway. But it's your source. It's the creator of all. It's, um. Every child of God is one in Christ. Now we're talking equalizing wisdom here. For his being is in Christ 
as Christ is in God. Now, I'm going to repeat that. Remember, I explained to you, well, Jesus in the course of trying to get you to remember that you're Christ, then he gets you to remember, oh, you're God, because there's only God. And here Jesus says it. Every child of God is one in Christ, for his being is in Christ as Christ is in God. There's only God. Christ's love for you is his love for his father, which he knows because he knows his father's love for him. When the Holy Spirit has at last led you to Christ at the altar to his father, perception fuses into knowledge because perception has become so holy that its transfer to holiness is merely its natural extension. Love transfers to love without any interference, for the two are one. As you perceive more and more common elements in all situations, that's what I'm wanting you to do. As many people as you can, I love you, Christ, Buddha, silently. Listen to what Jesus says. The more, as you perceive more and more common elements in all situations, the transfer of training under the Holy Spirit's guidance increases and becomes generalized you see that's what's happening to me all this is becoming generalized so when i look out there's only one god mind it's generalized it and it happens naturally due to its accumulation of all your practice uh uh let's see where it says it. gradually you learn here oh don't you love this gradually you learn to apply it to everyone and everything for its applicability is universal. See, that's what I'm talking about here. It gets so, if you want to wake up and save yourself years of time, you practice saying, I love you. Debbie came out for a second. I love you, everything you can think of. And saying Christ, Buddha, or God to everything you can think of as you in front of your face and in your images in your mind. Faking it while making it. Jesus says there, gradually you learn to apply it to everyone and everything. Then he says what happens? It becomes generalized. Then your awareness awakens. You have an awakened mind, awakened Christ's mind. And you have the vision, this single vision here. Uh, this spacious, all-encompassing wisdom or vision. Every illusion brought to its forgiveness is gently overlooked and disappears. And see, that forgiveness means we're thinking of our spirit. Everybody is spirit. That's advanced forgiveness. They're not a body, they're spirit. Um, let's see where it is. Uh, for at its center, Christ has been reborn. See what's happening? You're being reborn as your Christ self to light his home with vision that overlooks the world. All you need to do to dwell in quiet here with Christ is share his vision. Quickly and gladly is his vision given anyone who is but willing to see his brother sinless. Now, I know this is a hard thing to, to think, what the, what the heck? <laughs> you don't believe these people are sinless? But see, ultimately, we'll recognize, if you pra keep practicing, they are sinless because they're perfect. They're perfect Christ. They're perfect children of God. There's only God. These are just mental images just meant and how you know they're a mental image when you know when you close your eyes and go let's just think about a refrigerator and for and then a refrigerator image will show up in your mind <laughs> that's an image <laughs> but what happens we believe in the refrigerator so much and and certain karma we project refrigerators as a collective but whatever but see, these are simply images. That why the, Jesus calls them dream images. Wholeness is indivisible. But you cannot learn of your wholeness until you see it everywhere. I won't continue to see in my email, number three, equalizing wisdom. It's got a whole bunch of Jesus quotes there. Now, here's the number four wisdom do, that describes this, this awakened awareness the way the Christ's mind works when it's awakened, all accomplishing wisdom. 
is resourceful and can do anything that needs to be done. And that's what Jesus teaches you in the course. You're all powerful. You are not a victim of the world you see. <laughs> You're the maker of the world you see. <laughs> the creator of the world you see. <laughs> but we've forgotten that. It just all, ego just flopped it all. We made it and then ego makes his, has us believe it's real. Uh, now you never put your body in harm's way <laughs> because you cut yourself, you'll bleed. I mean, we're not stupid here. That's why it's called the middle path. While you're practicing A Course of Miracles and in my case, Zochin and whatever truths you're practicing, you're being practical. Visiting the doctor is needed, the dentist, whatever needs to be done because you want to stay alive so you can wake the hell up. <laughs> if you're sick, I mean, it takes a lot of, like when I had that, uh, that cough, boy, due to my practice, I would, I would breathe in and out of the cough. And I even started to picture that when I was coughing, I was spitting up judgments. I'm not kidding. Let them go. Spit them up. You know, and then if I uh, spit up some mucus, oh, I spit up some judgments. Help me, Holy Spirit. You know, I'm breathing in and out of this. Uh, uh, however, I was feeling while I took my Tylenol or whatever the doctor told me to do. But see, that's being one with whatever's showing up. We're not fighting it, resisting it, but yet, but yet we don't succumb to it. You're still remembering your Christ, Buddha, as you practice remembering your spirit, Christ, Buddha, and take do what your doctor says. Okay, now all accomplishing wisdom is resourceful and can do anything that needs to be done. We could say this is wisdom in action because see that is when you're guided to go do something out here in the world of uh, something to help the environment, something to help your local community. I don't know, food bank, whatever. The wisdom that results in skillful means because it equally and instantaneously understands all details, origins, consequences, consequences and implications, needs, methods. Because remember, the Course teaches, if you knew all sides, the only Holy Spirit can judge because he knows all sides of everything. We don't want to judge. We don't have that <laughs> wisdom. But here, all accomplishing wisdom is saying, you're, what happens, your mind joins with Holy Spirit and Jesus and the enlightened beings. Then you're under, that's why you have empathy and compassion. You can even start to read minds because you're understanding where people are coming from. And then you have a certain way that you're talking to these people. Like, for example, one day, I think I described to you all, it came to me a certain thing to say to one of my neighbors, something that I never would have been so skillful at doing before I would have made them mad at me. Something that needed to be done for the benefit of my whole neighborhood. Holy Spirit, I was guided, but I was just thinking that way. Your thinking changes to the thinking of Holy Spirit, but you're skillful, dip more diplomatic and loving, and it's not faked. This is how you're soaring and swooping at the same time in the physical realm. That's called one step in the in heaven and one step in the world at the, in the battle. I forget what Jesus calls it. One step in each, one foot in each place. You're straddling the line here. Um, now, let's see. This is all accomplishing wisdom. Let's see what he says here. I have in, oh, wait, here. Readiness. See, now readiness, that's another thing. It. Uh, this is good because this talks about fear cannot be mastered. Only you master love. Readiness is only the prerequisite is only the prerequisite for accomplishment. See, now this is called all accomplishing wisdom. The two should not be confused. As soon as a state of readiness occurs, there's usually some degree of desire to accomplish. See, you're wanting to accomplish enlightenment, right? Awakening, <laughs> you know, that's a desire. You want to accomplish that. Well, this gives you all accomplishing wisdom. That can Oh, look, there's Miss Sally. Oh, welcome, holy son of God, Sally. Reading about all accomplishing wisdom. 
there's usually some degree to accomplish, but it is by no means necessarily undivided. The state does not imply more than a potential for a change of mind. Mm. Confidence cannot develop fully until mastery has been accomplished. Because see, that's the purpose of the course. You're mastering your mind. It's a course in mind training. You're not letting me go run the show anymore. And uh, But he says here, and have emphasized the only real mastery is through love. This is Jesus talking in chapter two, section seven, paragraph seven. Readiness is only the beginning of confidence. You may think this implies that an enormous amount of time is necessary between readiness and mastery. But let me remind you that time and space are under my control. That's Jesus talking. I forget one of the miracles he says that he's the one that can alter time and space. And he does it because it's an illusion. Time and space is an illusion. It's not real. But Jesus, Jesus can change it based on your practice of a core of a of these truths. So, but he's saying, I want to reiterate, fear cannot be mastered. The mastery is through love. You're remembering that you're awakening to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. Now, the last wisdom is the one I talked about, spacious, all-encompassing wisdom. And it's displayed, this big mind encompassing everything, everything's included, nothing is excluded, meaning all these projections. Before I understood this, I was trying to exclude form. I thought form was bad because it was symbolized the ego. Well, no, no. The course doesn't teach that was a judgment I made. The form is perfect. It's just a projection, a made up thing from the Holy Son of God. So it's holy till I label it not holy, right? Or do something bizarre. But, um, um, but what happens is this big mind includes everything. Nothing's excluded. And you see that vision when you realize the true nature of mind is this pure, clear light. And you get to that pure, clear light because you're working with Holy Spirit, practicing advanced forgiveness and purifying your mind of these thoughts of separation. And these thoughts and emotions are outer, inner, and secret. There are three levels of this stuff. So that's why you keep practicing on this outer level of what shows up out in front of your face Inner is what shows up in your mind and secret are the things you've kept hidden from yourself. And uh, uh, the Holy Spirit will bring up from the unconscious mind. All these years we've lived here, all these judgments. Remember the other week I told you, Holy Spirit, I woke up and he showed me a judgment I had 30 years ago that I had forgotten to practice on. I judged that my family didn't walk this dog because they'd put it in a 10 by 10 pen, et cetera. Well, I, and I tried to talk to him about, can somebody walk this dog? Well, now with the skillful means that I have, I I would be afraid to talk to him in the past. That would be an argument. But now there's a skillful means of figuring out how to get maybe help get somebody else to walk the dog. I pay for somebody to walk the dog. There's skillful means that are involved where people aren't arguing and things happen. Oh, but anyway. So you realize the true nature of your mind is this clear, uh, clear God mind. Well, the nature of mind is this clear light. And you recognize that once it's connected fully with God, you're communing with God. Now, how that's been happening with me is um, years ago, I was instructed to rest in the light rest in the light. Then it became stay in the light. So when I lean back and feel the light and I rest there or I stay in the light, I remind myself that's God. I'm communing with God and I'm being with God. And my that's me. That light is me, my real self. So you're telling these are huge truths. High, 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 high truths. 
that you learn to rec realize and recognize and you're resting. You can visualize this, faking it while you make it. Now I feel it. But before I was faking it while making it. Resting in the light means you lean back from this personality of a body, leaning back, visualizing this great ray that comes straight in down the middle of you. Sometimes you can hit it well down the spine, but whatever. It radiates everywhere. And you rest. Just rest, breathe, relax, and smile, and just rest, relax into that light. Just be with that light. I never used to know what the hell even being meant. It means be in that light that you are. Be in that light is soaked with love. So resting in the light, and the other verb is stay in the light. And while in the light, pray in the light. So now when I pray, I do my meditation with that Zochen group out of LA every day. When I'm resting in the light, I we do prayers. I'm praying while in the light. And then it, and praying to the light. Praying to the light is praying to God. And I'll ask God or Holy Spirit and Jesus Buddha, strengthen our prayers. Strengthen our prayers, help our brothers wake up from the dream. So the, rest in the light, stay in the light, pray in the light, and to the light. Go lightly, meaning be merciful, gracious, gentle in your life. Lighten up, mean don't be as serious. And the last is enlighten up where you're visualizing you're just a light beam, which is what Jesus says you are. Enlighten up. You're, so you're awakening. Your awareness is awakening. Your mind is awakening to its Christ mind, Buddha mind, God mind. And your heart's opening to this unconditional love. And, and, and you're uh, becoming enlightened. Enlightened means completely filled with this love light. Now we're close to eight. Any questions or thoughts? Thank you, thank you, thank you for everybody for coming out. Any questions or thoughts before I stop recording? Usually Gonzalo's got something to say, but he may not be able to unmute. Or welcome, Holy Son of God iPhone, whoever that is. <laughs> and Glenn, God, I, got something. I was just typing, that's all. Oh, good. Here's Gonzalo. Good. Yeah, I was just typing there about what you said about asking. Um, and that's so true, because I think, you know, we come from, many of us come from traditional backgrounds where we think asking for uh, a miracle or a blessing is asking for what we want in the world, like for our dreams to come true or our desires to come true in the world. And that's where, of course, those those things aren't real. So God doesn't doesn't give us those things typically. So, um, but what you talked about when you asked for strengthening the prayer for everybody to wake up, that that that's a real thought. Those things are real. So when we ask for things that are real, the light to be shown, guidance, uh, unconditional love unconditional joy that those are the gifts of God that Jesus talks about so those things will be provided we might not feel a shift right away we typically don't when we're feeling down but the mere sincere asking is really the building of patience that so I put in in the chat earlier about that the constant asking for guidance and light is the building of patience so that, that that's those are the things that we want to ask so those are the blessings we don't want to um it's important because I, I used to hear it a lot in course groups you know, people are still praying for what they want and outcomes in the world. And, that, and those are misguided. We always want to ask for God's will to be done. However, that looks that the light to be shown, however that looks and try as best we can to let go of attachment to the outcomes. Those are real gifts that that are always ours. And I wanted to share something about the uh, the images and the out picturing and and the projections, because I heard something today from Aaron Apke that was fascinating, and I've never heard it worded a certain way. Um, and he puts it so clearly. He said the positive qualities 
not mastered yet are seen outwardly as desires. And he says the negative qualities not mastered yet uh, by our minds are seen externally as judgment. So accurate because you talked about, you know, desires in the world. And I remember Jesus in the supplements somewhere in the course talks about our sexual impulses, our miracle impulses, misguided miracle impulses. This is exactly what he's talking about here about, you know, uh, desires in the world. Those are really, you know, or anything. It could be anything that we want that we deem desirable, something that we think is positive in the world that we want or we want to get. Those are those are the positive qualities in spirit that we have not mastered yet. And so we manifest them and manifest them in these distractions in the projection. And it was anyway, I just thought it was and then then the opposite with the negative, you know, the negative qualities in our minds we haven't mastered yet, the anger, the jealousy, the guilt. Um there was a scene outwardly as judgments. And we know that really well because we, we we experience judgment all day long at, with ourselves and others. So I just thought it was uh, really clearly put when he said that about projections of images, which you talked about. Well, no, those that see those negativities, that anger, all those human things that you talked about, those get transformed if we practice the course and these Zotin truths about uh, these virtues where with, where then we have patience, skillful means. We see uh, patience, we have patience. These things develop at, if we practice them and ask Holy Spirit to help us for these higher virtues and recognize then these other, when these other egoic things happen. Now, Holy Spirit will never deny us anything about shelter, food, whatever, you know, so we stay open, you know, uh, he never denies anything. It's only us, only my thinking that would deny me something, but, yeah. but um, not my will, but thy will, but that I leave that to each person. I'm going for the higher the loftier goals and this other stuff just falls in place. It seems. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Keith, um, you know, um, what is the scripture about uh, focus on the kingdom and all else would be added unto it. Oh us. yeah. It's the same. And again, those are, that. that's the ultimate goal is for us to be fixated on the kingdom, on the light of God. Um, and, and then, you know, the, the worldly um, desires or needs, um, those things, you know, again, we, it's not denial. We have to deal with them here in the world. So we, we ask what to do. I think the general asking and, and prayer is just asking, hey, what to do? I'm out of food. I'm, I'm out of money. I'm homeless. Getting ready to get what to do? So it's really essentially all coming back to going to the source, God, yeah. the Christ, for guidance for everything. That's why we don't want to wait until we're desperate before we start uh, asking for guidance, which again is a big uh, a big trip up by a lot of core students, me included, for a long time. You know, you kind of withhold asking, you control, you try to control life yourself until things get desperate. Then you start asking. But again, this is why we this is why we live the ups and downs so we can realize it all has to go into the light if we're going to transform. Well put, well put, Gonzalo. Uh, Oh, and we become mindful and mindful and aware of how what yeah. we're thinking, saying, and doing. You're right. And when you were talking in that, uh, Gabby, I'll be right with you. Vigilant only for God. Remember, that's in the course. And I went, well, how the heck is that? Well, that just means we're thinking about God and remembering that. Oh, yeah, it's this clear light. The course teaches us he's light and love and spirit yeah. is yeah. here. Holy Spirit's here. We can't. And somebody talked about this might be called mysticism. Very few people even can believe in something they can't see. Right. right. We so believe in Holy yeah. Spirit, enlightened beings, God, because yeah. see, we've developed enough good karma where yeah. all those lifetimes and this lifetime where you're being brought to a course of miracles that's talking about your Christ. You're a Christ yeah. spirit. Oh man. Yeah. 
that's invisible. How do you see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's so true. Um, that's why I think it's so important to accelerate by using some sort of visual, you know, the, the light meditation and so forth. And you remember Paul from the retreat um, who offered his light meditation. So helpful because it, it helps us visualize, use our very powerful imaginations that the ego has taken and hijacked. Mm-hmm. It use that powerful mechanism in our mind to imagine the presence of this non-physical, omnipresent God presence. And if we can just, if we fixate on that, then our mind has less opportunity to run off into the darkness, into images. But we do need something else to fixate on. And so we can use that imagination as, as a guide, as an assistant, as a as a as a structure, right? To handrails, I call them, to hold on to that godly image in our minds while all the craziness of, of the ego thoughts keep running. Cause like you said, they won't go away. So just having that bridge of something else to focus on has been so immensely helpful. So so thank you. Oh yeah, that's the clear light he's talking about, the light in the eyes, but the great ray in Hinduism is called a cord of light comes in the top of the head and you can visualize, make it white light, whatever color light you want, comes down the center of you and radiates out every cell. That's how it is. You can yeah. visualize that and, and it will ultimately come to pass because that's the that arc of light's release. This is per the course and the great ray starts to download because that's what animates us. Keeps yeah. you alive in the breath. Thank you, Gonzalo. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Miss Gabby, you have a question, my dear. You can unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah. Uh, something I just wanted to mention that I found really helpful that you were that you were talking about was that um, I too sort of thought of all the projections that were out there that I see were um, negative or were the separation. And, yeah. and that was, I think, maybe a sticking point. And it's like, and it kind of brought me back to sort of non-dual teachings, which, you know, I did a lot of that before going, finding the course, where it says, accept everything, just yeah. accept it all, and just let it be. And then there's this, there's this sense of the judgment is the separation, yes. like, so it's not the objects or the, the yes. perceptions or projections. Yes. It's the judgment. So I'm yes. still still wrestling with it. So I'm still kind of, you know, grabbing it. But it really kind of helps oh, me to. Right. Isn't it yeah. wonderful to step back and realize that was what it was? But yeah, that I judged the body was was bad because it was the home of ego, the symbol of ego. But no, the garden, if we think about the Garden of Eden, had all the forms, the Adam and Eve, the whole thing was is all perfect. It's animated. All the forms are animated with the God light. It's when we had a judgment, we had a thought that we became the body and not the spirit. No, we weren't the spirit and the light. And then that started this, this duality of subject and object and judgment. And that's yeah, where and that's where I still have some issues is with the duality. Go ahead. Yeah, I still have some issues with, with duality because I know as, as long as there's light and dark and separate things that you see, that's duality. Um, right. Well, that con- that slowly leaves as you practice more and more of this advanced forgiveness where you silently say Christ, uh, Buddha, or God to each person that you comes up in front of your face and images in your mind and saying, I love you to them silently. Uh, politicians and admitting to yourself the things you hate. Ask Holy Spirit to help you sit with those things and saying silently, I love you to those. Because what that's doing is taking you past the form and past judgment, past subject and object to the commonality of everything, which is this light, this God nature, the spirit, 
light that animates everything. You slowly uh, generalize it like it was in that section where Jesus told it. It'll become generalized. What section was that? So you could go reread that. Let's see. It's in chapter 12, section six, paragraph six. Um, as you perceive more and more common elements in all situations, the transfer of training under the Holy Spirit's guidance increases and becomes generalized. Gradually, you learn to apply it to everyone and everything for its ap applicability is universal. See, in that love transfers to love without any interference. So you just keep saying, I love you to silently faking it while you're making it because for years we've, we've done what ego, we agreed with ego on all this crap. So we, we agree, this is Holy Spirit, Jesus kind of talking here. I love you. I love you because we are love. How else can you remember your love, but by loving? Makes sense, right? How else can you remember your love except by loving, right? But so, you know, so is, it, is it that things become less um, solid or that things become more... Um, I'm not sure how to express it, you know, because it's so mm -hmm. impossible. Porn. to. Yes. Well, as you sit with and visualize that great ray, it's a it's a it's a ray of light. You know, if you uh, put your email address, do you get my emails? Yeah. Oh, good. Well, then email me and you got the forgiveness document, the six page forgiveness document. Yeah. OK, good. Because the great ray, it's a ray that connects you to eternity. This ray of light, as you visualize, like Gonzalo was saying, this ray, it radiates light out mm -hmm. continuously through every cell. You're really like just a light being, B-E-I-N-G, a light being walking around. As you more and more sit with that, you feel, you'll feel more light. That's how you know things are working. You feel lighter in weight, but also... You don't take things as seriously. Never put your body in harm's way. But yeah, and then you'll you'll start to think about that lights streaming through everything. You're just saying, reasoning with yourself as you walk out in nature. You just know that there's that clear light or space that you see is God light going through everything. Things soften, they radiate. They'll, they do different things for different people. Um, but it just softens, um, and, um, and things just become more lively and beautiful and clear. Um, they're, they sparkle and, you know, it, plus you are aware of the impermanence. That's the other thing uh, of life and death. That's part of this immortal world, the mortal, mortal world. Um, and you come at peace and because you're letting things come and go. And that helps you realize their impermanence and they're not solidity. So just like you originally were thinking, just let things come and go. Do the best you can and let go. You let go and be aware when you have attachment and aversion where you want wanting and unwanting. You want something or you don't want something. That's the, uh, ig well, ignorance is what causes the most suffering and confusion because you've forgotten what you are. So therefore that causes suffering and confusion. You just keep reminding yourself, everything's clear God, or it's projected in the clear God light and it will happen. You just keep, this will get generalized. Does that help? Yeah, oh yeah, no, it's, it's, um it's uh, very experiential, you know, I, I kind of, I get that, that it's very experiential and I'm always trying to think, think it, think it through or think it how it might look or how it might be or, and I think that's, that's the ego, right? And the ego. No, no, that could be visualizing or, and you're reasoning with yourself. There's a difference. You're kind of reflecting on it. You're, uh, it, and how you know is how severe you are desperate you feel you're just softly 
and visualizing because that's what you do. You have, you're visualizing. You're using, like Gonzalo said, the power of the mind is so huge. We visualize darkness, evil, uh, the bad stuff. So now we're seeing things uh, like that. What's it say? Mirror-like reflection. You look out and you, it just reflects. The images are just there. We're no longer labeling them good and bad, like and dislike. That's duality. Do, you know, judging it. You leave it be, let it be, let it be, and ask Holy Spirit, guide me what to do or say, because we're not bumps on logs. We're still going to make decisions and plan, but we just do the best we can and let go. That's the other thing that was real beneficial to me, because if you're not careful, you don't want to make any decisions. <laughs> you do the best you can and let go. Yeah, that's lovely thank you yeah, you're very welcome gabby thank you any other thoughts or comments bef uh, well before we go then everybody look through at the screen each person on the screen and practice jesus's advanced forgiveness like uh leon holy son of god leon god god glenda god dance god Barbie, God, Angela, God, Gonzalo, God, Gabby, God, Debbie, God, Lynn, God. I forget, Teresa was here. Teresa, God, Ed, God. Because Jesus says it. Call yourself by the, your real name, God, because there's only God. Now, of course, he's our creator, our father. Don't get me wrong. Boy, I love him. A <laughs> living force. It's ecstatic. It's loving joyous, happy, loving God, our Father. Any other thoughts or comments before I stop recording? Thank you, thank you for coming out tonight. I'm going to stop the recording.